On this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast, top 52 books to crush your debt. Welcome to the Crushing Debt Podcast with your host, Florida attorney, Sean Yesner, where our goal is to help you get rid of the financial bullies in your life. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner, owner and founder of Yesner Law. And what I thought I'd do this week is take a look at the books that I read last year and let you know which ones were the most uh, influential on me, which ones were the best that I thought to help you eliminate your debt. Now, I'm not going to go through all 52 books. I'm just going to sort of hit the highlights here. And these books ranged from topics uh, all over the map. So topics about debt, topics about negotiation, topics about business, about mindset, all different kinds of books. As many of you know, last year, 2020, uh, I set a goal to read 50 books in the year. Now, interestingly, as I got towards the uh, in my birthday, which is mid-December, as I got towards Christmas, I thought that I was reading my 50th book and I could take two weeks off. What I actually realized when I tracked it is that the book that I was reading right around that time was my 51st book. And so I thought, you know what, let me just knock out one more before the end of the year. That'll give me 52 books on average, one a week, and then I can uh, give all that material to all of you and you can pick and choose uh, whatever books that you like out of that list uh, or any other books. Now, I do not have a goal of 50 books in 2021. I do have a goal to read in 2021, but not uh, 52 books. I I don't know exactly what I'm going to make that goal yet, maybe 40, maybe 45. Something that, you know, now that I know I can average a book a week, I don't necessarily have to average a book a week. And it was interesting because the last week of the year, I actually completed my goal of reading the 52nd book uh, right before the week of New Year's. And so that whole week, I decided to give my brain a break and I didn't read anything. But the interesting thing was I woke up in the morning and I felt like I had to read something. And so uh, I did other things. I I consumed material other ways, either uh, on the internet or reading articles on the internet or listening to podcasts or or whatever. And when I say read, what I mean is I actually read 50 books. I didn't, 52 books. I didn't listen to them on Audible. Now, for those of you that use Audible, great tool, highly recommend it, uh, a great tool to listen in your car. But when I'm in my car or running or doing whatever where I have headphones in, I'm either listening to music or listening to podcasts. And so to take that time away to listen to books would have taken time away from listening to podcasts. So a lot of respect for Audible. For those of you that, that listen to books on Audible, you are still consuming the content. I think that's a great thing. But for me personally, I like to turn the pages. I like to you know, click the the side of the of the tablet to make the page advance. You know, whatever it is. Uh, so I actually read with my eyes rather than listening with my ears. Fifty two books in twenty twenty, and so let me go through let me go through them in order. And again, I'm not going to go through all fifty two, but I'm going to basically just hit the highlights. So the first book was actually book number three, and it was called Never Split the Difference by an author named Chris Voss, V-O-S-S. And again, a lot of these books I'll put in the links to the, in the notes here so you can, so you can read those. Uh, but Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Now, Chris was a negotiator, high, high-level negotiator for uh, different governmental agencies. And so he puts all of his negotiation secrets and how he negotiates. He was one of the top hostage negotiators, I believe, for the FBI, if not the FBI, the CIA. But again, one of those top level governmental agencies. And he puts a lot of his tips and tricks into that book. And so that book was really instrumental in helping me become a better negotiator, negotiator on debt settlements, negotiator uh, in mediations, negotiator in dealing with opposing counsel and trying to settle cases, uh, negotiations with even with family, with friends, with whatever. Uh, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. If you haven't read it, a fantastic book on negotiation tactics, negotiation strategies. Uh, The next book I I highlighted here was uh, the fifth one on my list by Jeff Gittimer, and it's called Get Shit Done. Now, it's spelled S-H star T, but I don't know that there's any other way to say it than to say it. Uh, But again, by Jeff Gittimer. Now, what I love about Jeff Gittimer, he's one of the top sales, if not the top sales author 
uh, in in the country, in the world. And I actually had the opportunity, I told the story on an earlier episode, I actually had an opportunity to talk to him by telephone, which was a fantastic uh, experience for me. That book was very, very instrumental. I, I love Jeff Gittimer's writing style. It's very simple. It's very direct. It's very to the point. Uh, and it was a very quick and easy read. I mean, he doesn't clutter up the page with a lot of words. He just says what he needs to say and move on. But it was a real good book in terms of getting your mind right to get stuff done. In other words, don't procrastinate. Just get stuff done that you need to get done and and the mindset that it takes to do something like that. Now, one of the interesting things about that book is that it introduced me to another author called Orison Sweat Marden. Uh, Orison Sweat, S-W-E-T-T, Marden, M-A-R-D-E-N. And I'll get to Mr. Marden here a little bit later because one of the things that Jeff Ginnimer said in his book was that an influence on him was a book called He Can Who Thinks He Can by Orison Sweat Marden. And as I looked into that author a little bit more, he was an author that predated uh, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, and some of those other authors, and and some of their books are based on his writings. And so, when I researched uh, "He Can Who Thinks He Can," I stumbled upon a compilation of twenty one different books that Orison Sweat Marden had written uh, over the years, way way back, and they were. Uh, broken up into three volumes, and each volume is about 700 pages long, but each book is only 100 to 150. And so uh, over the course of the year, you'll hear that I read a lot of Orson Sweat Marden's stuff, and I'll, I'll tell you about the impact that it had on me, but I want to go in order. So after I finished Gittimer's book, somebody had recommended to me a book called Debt, The First 5,000 Years by David Graeber. And that was a long read. I think that book was four or 500 pages in and of itself. But it was a great read. And it talked about the evolution of debt from the beginning of time until now. And it actually challenged some of my preconceived notions of what debt is. It challenged, you know, the fact that one uh, government may owe another foreign government a ton of money. Well, is that really debt? Because if the first government defaults, that basically crushes the economy of the second government if the debt is sizable enough. So is it really debt? Same thing if you take that down to a macro level here within the United States. If there's a company, you know, one of the things that I heard uh, this past week is that two of the malls we have here locally are in foreclosure because uh, they're not getting enough, they're not paying their mortgages to the banks. And part of the reason they're not paying their mortgages to the banks is there aren't as many businesses renting at the mall. And part of the reason there aren't as many businesses renting at the mall is because the economy was shut down. And when the economy was shut down, those businesses that were renting in the mall went out of business. And so is that foreclosure by the bank really debt owed by the mall? I mean, what's going to happen? The bank is going to foreclose. The bank is going to take over the mall now with no tenants in it. So now the bank has to figure out how to repurpose that mall space. They've got to invest a ton of money in order to repurpose the mall space, or they've got to drop rents to entice businesses to come back in. Those businesses have to get customers. In this COVID pandemic, we have to get people to go back to the malls and shop in this age of Amazon and online shopping. So is it really debt that the mall has to the bank? I mean, yes, in the traditional sense, the mall borrowed money and has to pay it back. But really, who's in debt to who? Is the bank just going to take over a situation that the mall couldn't succeed? And how is the bank going to succeed in that situation where the mall couldn't? Is the bank going to take a huge loss on that debt? And so this book, Debt, the First 5,000 Years, really goes into a lot of those concepts. It was a hard read. It was a long read, but it was... Super, super interesting. Uh, the next book on the list, number seven, Socks to Success, written by my friend Tiffany Kellogg. Now, most of you have heard Tiffany on my podcast multiple, multiple times. Socks to Success was her third book. 
uh, and it was a great book. It was all about branding and brand recognition and how do you brand yourself. I mean, this podcast itself is part of the branding of me and of Yesner Law. A lot of people here locally in the Tampa Bay area and most of you, most of my listeners know me as a podcaster, even though I really am an attorney. Uh, now, I love podcasting and I consider myself a podcaster as well, but my brand is an attorney who podcasts, an attorney who podcasts to help his clients. But what's your brand? That's one of those things that Socks to Success uh, will help answer. Books 11 and 12 were the first two books that I read by Orison Sweat Martin. Book 11 was He Can Who Thinks He Can. Jeff Gittimer talked about it so much in his book uh, that it had to be the first one that I read. The one after that was uh, Architects of Fate. Now, the thing about Orson Sweat Martin's books, and, and the thing that I'm going to highlight in every single one of his books, I'll say it now, I'll get it out of the way, but it applies to every single one of his books. Very thought-provoking, very inspiring, but written in an older style of English. So it took a little bit of time to work through some of the language. There wasn't the slang, the, the euphemisms, the thing that we would expect of writing from today. And so you really had to read the book, but it was very uplifting, very inspiring, very uh, mental mindset uh, type of stuff. And so he can who thinks he can and architects of fate. Uh, the next book, book number 13, lucky number 13, was a book called Nine Unconventional Ways to Podcast by my friend Mark Asquith. Now, Mark is part of Rebel Base Media. I'll post a link to his stuff here in the show. Uh, he has uh, his own uh, podcast uh, production company, podcast hosting company. He hosts a number of podcasts on a couple of different topics, but most notably a podcast about podcasting. And so if you're interested on how to start a podcast, grow a podcast, monetize a podcast, promote a podcast, you really want to listen to uh, Mark Asquith and, and his things and get his book, Nine Unconventional Ways to Podcast. I believe that book is free uh, on his website, but again, I'll, I'll post a link. Jumping to book number 16, called How to Wipe Your Dad's Ass by Brian Morris. Uh, it's actually, I believe, it's How to Wipe Your Dad's Ass and Other Things Your Doctor Won't Tell You About Alzheimer's. Brian Morris is a friend of mine. Brian Morris has a company that helps other companies uh, determine cost savings by bringing in different vendors to help them achieve goals in terms of um, health insurance, in terms of supplemental insurance, in terms of other types of cost-benefit analysis type savings. But Brian recently lost his father to Alzheimer's and decided to write a book about it. So the book that Brian wrote was called uh, How to Wipe Your Dad's Ass and Other Things Your Doctors Won't Tell You About Alzheimer's. And I remember doing a review of it, I believe, on my show at the time. I interviewed Brian Morris a couple episodes back. I've actually got three episodes, I believe, with Brian Morris. But you can go back and look uh, for the How to Wipe Your Dad's Ass um, book review. And it was very emotional. Brian's writing style put you there with him and his father. And it was raw and it was honest and it was a great book, and it was something I hope I never, ever have to experience, either for my parents or even for myself. So uh, for those of you that want to check it out, for those of you that have family members that are dealing with Alzheimer's, uh, it was a great, great book. It wasn't a medical book. It's not going to give you medical information, but it's going to give you practical information that Brian went through himself. Uh, he does have some suggestions on, on tips and and strategies to deal with people that uh, have uh, dementia and other types of, of uh, diminished uh, capacity like that. And so, great, great, great book. Uh, book number 17 and 19 were both, again, by Orson Sweat Martin, The Secret of Achievement and Every Man a King. Uh, and you can hear just from the titles of these books that, that Orson wrote that they are very uplifting. They're very uh, mindset-oriented, very achievement-oriented type books. And, and part of the reason I scatter them throughout the year is it is a little bit more of a mental exercise to read an older style of English. And so I would take a break from the more complicated reading style and go to something that was written more modern. Or in the case of Brian Morris's book, I just I wanted to knock it out quickly so I could give him uh, some feedback on it. Book number 20, How Money Works by uh, authors named Tom Matthews and Steve Siebold. Now, How Money Works is more of a 
practical book about the nature of money, about uh, saving, savings accounts, about life insurance, about other different types of, of things that you need to know, uh, the rule of sevens, all these different things that you need to know about money. Now, part of the reason I'm highlighting that book, How Money Works, is uh, our friend Polly Bauer, who hosts uh, Swipe the Podcast. Our friend Polly Bauer is taking people through the How Money Works program. And so if you're interested in that book, How Money Works, and you're interested in working with Polly and learning some of these issues and implementing some of these issues, let me know. Shoot me an email, uh, send me some kind of contact, and I will connect you with Polly and How Money Works. Again, books 22 and 23, Making Life a Masterpiece and Character, again, by our friend Orison Sweat Marden. Book number 25 is a book that set me on a totally different journey than I ever thought I would get into uh, within this year, within the year 2020. Book 25 was Copywriting Secrets by a guy named Jim Edwards. And Copywriting Secrets had a major, major impact. It impacted how I titled and promote the podcast. It impacted how I interact with people on social media. It interacted how I write blogs. It interacted how I write motions to the court. The purpose of Copywriting Secrets is to teach you how your words have impact and how you can use those words to have a greater impact. In other words, everything depends on your copy. From the way you title things, the way you write things, the way you do things, everything depends on copy. And that's what I learned uh, in Jim Edwards' book, Copywriting Secrets. Now, that book led to a series of books, Dotcom Secrets, Expert Secrets, and Traffic Secrets, all written by Russell Brunson. Now, Russell Brunson is an author, is a person that I've been following for a while, and one of those that I kept saying, I'll get around to it when I get around to it. Well, if you're saying that, get around to it now. So dot-com secrets, expert secrets, and traffic secrets basically teach you how to create, grow, monetize an online business. And so how do you create the websites? How do you become the expert in the field to draw interest from people that might want to buy what you're selling? And then how do you drive traffic? It's all about funnels and funnel building. So Russell Brunson, uh, dot-com secrets, Expert Secrets and Traffic Secrets. And again, if you go to the website, you can get all three books, plus you get a fourth book that teaches you, that, that helps you put a plan together for all three. Now, the reason I say those four books, CopywritingSecrets.com, Expert, and Traffic Secrets, all had a major, major influence on me is they helped me launch my first funnel. And as most of you know, the, the book within that first funnel is called Become Debt-Free in Less Than One Hour. And so that's a book that I wrote. And so since I spent so much time writing it and I had to read it multiple times to proofread it, I included Become Debt-Free as book 29 uh, here in my list of books because I, I had to read it and I had to write it. And so I gave myself credit for that. Uh, Become Debt Free is available, like I've been saying on every episode, www.seanmyesner.com slash become debt free. Again, www.seanmyesner.com slash become debt free. And again, the point of that book is to help you on your journey to becoming debt free. Now, the full title of the book, Become Debt Free in Less Than One Hour. It is not my intention that you start reading the book now and an hour from now you are debt free. That is obviously not uh, the intention there. The intention is that all the things within the book in terms of increasing income, decreasing expenses, uh, learning you know, your, the right money mindset, all of that stuff, each individual piece will take you less than one hour to implement. And so over the course of reading the book and implementing all the strategies, each strategy takes less than an hour. You can implement them. You can combine them. And at the end of implementing all of this stuff, you will increase your income. You will decrease your revenue. Uh, I'm sorry. You will increase your income. You will decrease your expenses. And you will use all of that stuff uh, to knock out your debt and eventually become debt free. Uh, Russell also, Russell Brunson also wrote a couple of other books, 21 Different Ways to Create Products. So if you're looking for a way to create product for your funnel, there's a book that he wrote there. Uh, and then 30 Days. 30 Days is a book that he compiled. And so he went out and he asked um, different people, different authors, and said, hey, look, if you lost everything today, what would you do to make money within the next 30 days? And then he put all those interviews uh, into this book. 
uh, but I'm not really going to go into them any more than that. Again, more from Oris and Sweat Marden. Book 32, Pushing to the Front. Book 34, An Iron Will. Book 35, Ambition and Success. Book 36, The Hour of Opportunity. And again, as you listen to these titles, Pushing to the Front, An Iron Will, Ambition and Success, The Hour of Opportunity, again, all positive mindset books, not necessarily money mindset books, although some of them are, but powerful mindset books. And so I would really encourage you to pick up a lot of these books and start reading them from the perspective of just getting your mindset into a powerful place for 2021. Another book that I want to highlight around Become Debt Free I created a workbook around your money mindset, and it's the Become Debt-Free Workbook, and I included it as book 33 in my list. Again, because I had to read it multiple times, I had to write it, I had to interact with it. Now, there's only one way that you can get the Become Debt-Free Workbook, and that's by going to seanmyesner.com slash become debt-free. You order the Become Debt-Free book, and then there's an upsell to get the Become Debt-Free Workbook, plus a lot of other content that I've created. So the Become Debt-Free Workbook is uh, something that you would have to go uh, online and buy as part of the Become Debt-Free Book. Now, for those of you who are interested, Become Debt-Free, the the actual book itself that I wrote, is now available on Kindle. So you can get it for free at seanmyesner.com slash become debt-free, or you can go on Kindle, and I believe I priced it at four ninety nine on Kindle, and you can get the Kindle book for 5 bucks. just depends on whether you want to support me by paying me some money or whether you want to get the book for free and get, get included onto an email list and a book funnel. But I do have those two options for you. Uh, skipping to book number 40, How Good Attorneys Become Rainmakers. This was by a couple of authors named Mark Powers and Sean McNails, uh, and it was written, I, I want to say, 10 or more years ago. Uh, And so a lot of the concepts in it, maybe in the last five years, I I don't recall, but a lot of the concepts in the book were things that I already do. Uh, Some of the concepts were made obsolete by COVID. Some of them were not. Things like going out to lunch with people, things like uh, open houses, things like uh, sending cards, sending articles of interest, all things that I knew about how to grow a law practice. But again, it was good to get a reminder. Now, just in case some of you are thinking, even though the title of the book is How Good Attorneys Become Rainmakers, again, a lot of the concepts in the book are very, very simple, very, very straightforward. And so even if you're not an attorney, but you're in some kind of professional business, and I would even go on to say, even if you're in a service-related business, or even if you're in a business where it's business to consumer sales, uh, How Good Attorneys Become Rainmakers would be a good book to learn because a lot of the strategies within the book are strategies that really any business could use. In fact, The concept of how good attorneys become rainmakers is a concept that I've had for a book uh, for a while. In other words, I would want to write a book about how attorneys can network. And and who knows, maybe that'll be book number three. I guess we'll see as we get into 2021. Book number 42 is another podcast guest, Joshua Cohen, who wrote the student loan handbook for uh, non-attorneys or uh, student loan handbook. Uh, It's basically a book about how to deal with your student loans. Not only does it teach you about your student loans, but it teaches you strategies about those student loans. So Joshua Cohen's website is the studentloanlawyer.com and his book is Student Loan Lawyer's Guide to Understanding Student Loans in Plain English by Joshua Cohen. And so if you go to the studentloanlawyer.com, you'll see his book there, The Student Loan Lawyer's Guide to Understanding Student Loans in Plain English. It is a great book. It's a book that I've actually used as a resource here a couple of times in the last few months about the different options available to people that are trying to deal with their student loans. And so that was book number 42 of the year. Book number 43 is a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, And Atomic Habits was, again, a a great book and sort of a uh, life-changing, direction-changing book for me. And the, the point of Atomic Habits is how to create and implement atomic habits, how to create and implement habits that stick, habits that don't go away after you're done focusing on them. And breaking negative habits. So not only does it help you create positive habits, but it helps you learn how habits are created so that you can break negative habits. Uh, Atomic Habits, great book by an author named James Clear. The next book, 44, is a book, again, you heard this uh, person as a guest on my podcast. 
uh, Fix This Next by Mike Michalowicz. Now, I've talked about Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Fix This Next Fix this Next is another business book that talks about how to uh, determine and identify the uh, issues within your business that you need to fix so that your business uh, becomes profitable, so that your business doesn't entrap you in a job, so that you can get away from the business and have it function all on its own and, and succession planning and all that kind of stuff. So what are the the issues in what order that you need to fix in order to get your business uh, on the right track. And so fix this next by our friend Mike Michalowicz, who I also interviewed on the Crushing Debt podcast. Uh, great book. Uh, one more book here by Orison Sweat Martin for the year, Prosperity, How to Attract It. And again, like I said, How to Attract Prosperity. One of those just great uplifting books. It took a little bit of time to read because of the way uh, the, it was written. It wasn't written in today's English, like I said, but but again, great book, great uplifting book. If you just need some mental uh, juice, you just need some mental positive vibes, pick up anything by Orison Sweat Marden and, and give it a read. Fantastic, fantastic book. Last two books that I want to talk about, books 51 and 52, the two that were above my goal. Remember, my goal was 50 books, and I ended up reading 52. So the last two that I want to focus on, book number 51, Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. Now, those of you that spend any amount of time online probably know Michael Hyatt as the person that wrote the uh, Full Focus Planner, and so a yearly planner that you can uh, take notes in and write in and journal in and, and basically document what are the goals you want to accomplish and and how are you getting there. In fact, I did not order a Full Focus Planner, but Michael Hyatt was the inspiration for my goal setting and goal tracking system, which I've talked about a lot before. And actually, another one of my sort of concepts bopping around in my brain is to create my version of uh, what Michael Hyatt uses to create my version of my system to help all of you. So if it's something you're interested in, let me know and, and I'll either send you my system or maybe I will create a book about it. You know, who knows? But Michael Hyatt, your best year ever. So I thought going into 2021, uh, I wanted to make, I want to make 2021 my best year ever. And so it was a great book to read and it was about those concepts. It was about goal setting. It was about accountability. It was about staying on track. It was about tracking results. It was about all those things that you need to do to set and accomplish goals during the year. So your best year ever. Uh, great, great book. The last book that I read in 2020 and the last book that I want to talk about here is a book by an author, Larry Winget. And so for those of you that don't know, Larry Winget uh, you want to put on your explicit glasses when you read his books. And as you can tell by the title of this book, it's called Grow a Pair. And it's exactly what it sounds like, Grow a Pair. Uh, but I love the book, and I love Larry Wingate's writing style. And I read a book of his last year as well. And I love his writing style because it is direct, it is to the point, it is in your face. And so the point of Grow a Pair is not to become a jackass. The point of Grow a Pair is to basically grow a pair and and stand up for yourself and be assertive and be direct, but don't be a jerk and don't cower and don't give in to what other people want. Now, if it's a negotiation, obviously there's compromises involved, but the point of grow a pair is exactly that. Don't take any crap from anybody and do what you need to do to protect yourself, do what you need to do for your business, do what you need to do for your family, and basically grow a pair. It was a great way to end 2020 and start into 2021. Now, again, I don't know what my 2021 goal is going to be in terms of reading, but I know that I am going to read a lot in 2021 and hopefully the beginning of January next year, we'll get uh, all the books that I read this year. I've already started my my first one, which is, again, a book about negotiation and negotiation skills and negotiation tactics. And so I read all kinds of different books, and as and when I can, I'll bring the authors to you. I'll bring the topics to you. How does all this relate to crushing debt? Well, you can't get rid of your debt without a positive mindset. You can't get rid of your debt without negotiation skills. You can't get rid of your debt without business building skills. You can't get rid of your debt without increasing your revenue, decreasing your expenses. Everything I've read 
so far in 2020 and 2021 and even 2019 were all around those concepts so that I could help you crush your debt. Now, speaking of crushing debt, I do want to bring up our sponsor, Sam Cohen. As all of you know that are longtime listeners, Sam owns Attorneys First Insurance, and his job is to write errors and omissions insurance, malpractice insurance, basically, for attorneys and title companies uh, all over the country. Now, Sam is not licensed in every state in the country, but if you are an attorney or a title company and you're interested in malpractice insurance, contact Sam. If he cannot write in your state, he'll either get licensed in your state or he'll find someone who can write in your state and make the referral. But if you want an apples-to-apples comparison of the malpractice insurance you have now and what Sam can get you, then please, please reach out to him. Uh, His information is sam at attorneysfirst.com or www.attorneysfirst.com. Again, sam at attorneysfirst.com or www.attorneysfirst.com. So again, I wanted to thank Sam as our sponsor. Looking forward to another great year of uh, having Sam as our sponsor. Looking forward to what 2021 is going to bring us. Uh, Looking forward to all the great things that all of you can accomplish in the next year. Uh, Remember my book, www.seanmyesner.com slash become debt free. Also, the Crushing Debt book is available on Amazon. I think that'll do it for this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. Like I say at the end of every episode, I hope that all of this stuff that I'm bringing to you can help you have more money at the end of the month rather than more months at the end of the money. That'll do it for this week's episode, and we look forward to talking to you in next week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. If you have questions that you think would make a great topic for a future episode, please email Sean or connect with us on social media. Sean Yesner and Yesner Law PL are Florida licensed attorneys. The information contained in this week's episode is not a substitute for legal advice. Your situation may differ, especially if you are located somewhere other than the state of Florida. If you have questions, please contact our office or contact a local attorney. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. Podcast.